Hey guys, welcome back to A Baker's Journey. So today we're making French baguettes. So I guess I can start off this um, to talk about a little bit about uh, what I learned in the past. So with this specific recipe, I developed it my, uh, myself. So um, one way I learned to develop recipes is to use baker's percentages. Baker's percentages are, um, they can be a little bit difficult. It took me a little while to get my head wrapped around this, the whole theory of them. Um, but once you kind of get it, the understanding of it, it makes it a lot easier. And you start kind of getting, I don't know, base points that you can work off of. So, a baker's percentages. So, when I first learned about them, something you learn in culinary school. So, um, I was working with a co-worker and we were making artisan breads. Um, and he told me, we'll just use a baker's percentage. And I was like, what is that? Well, at that point in time, it just opened up a whole new ball game for me because you know things were starting to get kind of stagnant for me in the baking career. I've been baking for years. Um, I came up with my own stuff and you know worked with a lot of like cake mixes and stuff like that. At this point in time, I have never even made up my own cakes. Um, and when he said that, I was just like, okay. So he showed me what a baker's percentage was, and at that point, it just it got rid of the stagnant environment I was in completely and you know it opened up my baking career because when you learn something that's that inspirational it just the sky is the limit so I'll kind of describe a little bit of what a baker's percentage is so a baker's percentage is um, you always have your main ingredients, which is usually your flour if you're making bread. Um, so your main ingredient is flour, so your um, baker's percentage would look like this. So you have 100% flour, and then everything else is based off that 100%. So if I wanted to say this French bread, which is 62% hydration, um, would be 62% water. So 62% of the amount of flour that you have. So if I had a thousand grams, 62 would be 620 grams of water, and so on and so on. I also learned with baker's percentages that there's some pretty, I guess, universal results that you can get with it. So one of them is salt. Now I can use salt in pretty much any recipe at 2% for bread, and it seems to be fine. I've never had an issue with using 2%. Um, I have reduced it a little bit when making brioche. Because brioche, if I'm using salted butter, then I want to reduce the salt a little bit because I don't want to have overly salted bread. Um, yeast, on the other hand, um, doesn't really fall into the baker's percentage category. So, if I have yeast, no matter how much yeast I have, I could have one gram of yeast in a thousand gram flour batch or I could have you know 40 grams of yeast in a thousand gram flour batch no matter what the only thing that it's gonna do is take more time or less time depending on how much yeast you have so I do use baker's percentages for yeast but they're not really necessary um, so the one thing that I usually do is keep it around 1%, one, 1%, maybe even a little less. If I'm doing sourdoughs and I'm just trying to give it a little kickstart, I'll give it maybe, you know, 0.2% yeast, so on and so on. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about why I love French bread so much. So French bread, we talked about this before, I, it was the first bread I ever learned how to make. And I worked at it and worked at it and worked at it and I finally got to a point where I made pretty decent French bread. But with the baker's percentages it completely opened up a whole new ball game for me because then I could really experiment on how to make this dough perfect. So 
French bread. And actually, um, when I was, I think I was maybe 16 years old, there was a, a cartoon that came out. And there was a, a chef in it, and the chef said, a real good French bread will crackle when you squeeze it. Now, <laughs> this is amazing, but the, what I like about French bread the most is when you take it out of the oven after, you know, the long steam and the long bake, and as soon as you take it out, it's this beautiful golden brown, it's going to crack. It's going to crackle, and it's going to have a voice, a voice of its own that's going to talk to you and tell you how good it is. Um, that's probably one of my most enthusiastic things about making French bread. I just love that sound that it makes when it comes out of the oven. The smell is amazing too. Um, so, to give you a little bit of information on my past, um, I figured out I was allergic to gluten around, around when I was 20, 22 years old. So when I found out that, um, I thought baking was done for me, I couldn't do it anymore. Um, the baker's percentages opened that up for me too, as when you start learning the science behind making breads and doughs, and understanding how these percentages work, you really don't need to taste them anymore. Um, you just need to know how the science works. And the, the cool thing about baking is that it is a science and it will work if you do it the right way it will work no matter what um, cooking's a little different cooking you can throw things in you can taste it see how it is with baking if you don't do something right you're gonna see it in your end product and you'll know right away that you know maybe I will add way too much salt to that um, or it's hard as a rock or so on and so on. So a lot of it is texture, a lot of it is um, feel, and about 90% of it is the science behind making it. And that's what I find the most interesting. So as you can see, I'm using some tools. One of them is this, this lame. I can leave a, just, um, a link in the description for where I bought it. I got it from Amazon. Um, the baker's couche that I use to proof the baguettes in um, is just a piece of um, cotton, cotton cloth. So it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be something that's going to cost you a lot of money. Like I said before, baking shouldn't cost a whole bunch of money. It should be relaxing. It should be fun. And that's what we want to make it. Um, that's what we're going to learn in the baker's journey. We're going to learn how to bake amazing breads, amazing cookies, amazing pies, and it shouldn't cost you a fortune, and it shouldn't be stressful, it should be fun. So, um, today I'm using this baguettes, I'm going to have some friends try them out, and um, we're going to pair them with brie cheese and raspberry jelly. Um, I'm garnishing with mint leaves and they're just, <laughs> as you can see as I'm cutting them, they're just crackling. Um, anyways, we, uh, we learned a lot about making French bread today and I hope you guys really enjoy this recipe. I hope you try it at home and I hope your friends and family enjoy it as well. And I hope you have an amazing day. So keep it up. Keep watching the videos and subscribe so you can keep getting more feeds like this and have an amazing rest of your week.